Hello and welcome to another Popper video. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit out of the ordinary. We're going to be talking about Alter Combotron. And uh, that relies on this card, Ashnot's Alter, which says sacrifice a creature, add two um, colorless, colorless mana. And then what happens is you can play Mirror Retriever. It says when Mirror Retriever dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you have a great Mirror Retriever in the graveyard and a Mirror Retriever in your hand, you play the Mirror Retriever, sacrifice it to Alter, get back Mirror Retriever. So that's a mana neutral loop. When you do this, if you have Golem Foundry in play, you can actually make infinite Golems. So you have infinite 3-3 three, three Golems at that point. And then if you have infinite 3-3 three, three Golems, you actually also have infinite mana because you can sacrifice infinite Golems for infinite colorless mana. And if you have infinite colorless mana, you can use makeshift munitions to make infinite damage with your infinite golems. Now obviously this doesn't work very well on Magic Online. And because of that, today I'm going to be just showing some replays, mostly because clicking Alter, Mirror Retriever, Alter, Mirror Retriever, Alter, Mirror Retriever, not only is it boring, it also really lags out my PC and uh, we would not be able to finish a video on time. If you're playing this in paper, you can really shortcut things and we'll see there's a couple points in this league where I actually was able to um, have the opponent be nice and uh, shortcut and scoop to the combo. So let's go over the deck. We're playing uh, the Tron Lands, Mine, Power Planet, Tower. And I noticed that I was playing different arts before because I wanted to have the ability to easily search them up. But now I realize that these uh, full art lands have different left borders. So you have green, like an orangey, and like the gray. So you can just play the full set, which is nice. Then I have three basics. Uh, one Polluted Mire to search up for Cycling, one Haunted Fengraf. This is a card that can uh, return a creature card from a graveyard to your hand, so we can like rebuy a mar uh, Finger and Marauder and stuff. One Cave of Temptation for a colored source, and then into the deck we have 12 eggs. Nope, just uh, we have 11 eggs. I actually trimmed a Terrarion when I went up to 18 lands. And then I'm playing two crop rotations to try to get Tron as fast as possible and seven dispute effects and then I'm playing four wellspring the four mirror retriever and uh, my three fangin marauders over here so the fangin marauders are mostly like can be used for infinite life and really pretty good against burn and against things like affinity kind of obviously there one thing that uh, is cool with this list um, is blood fountain you can play Mirror Retriever, sacrifice it to Alter, and then Blood Fountain back, the, and then get something else back, and then Blood Fountain back the Mirror Retriever, and then use Mirror Retriever to get back Blood Fountain. So there's kind of like some some fancy loops. If you have two Mirror Retrievers, you can play both of them out, sacrifice one to get back something good, sacrifice the other one to get back Blood Fountain, and then sacrifice them Blood Fountain to get back both of the Mirror Retrievers. So there's some weird loops there. In the sideboard, I've got uh, basically five Hydroblast for Blitz, two Duresses for control matchups, two Arms of Hadar, which is specifically versus go-wide strategies like um, Boros Tokens or versus Elves or maybe uh, Fey. And then one more Fangren Marauder for um, Blitz strategies and for Affinity. Uh, one Nature's Claim. This is useful against Relics. And then two Serene Hearts for Bogles, and then two Spell Bombs for Cycle Storm and Mockwords. And without any further ado, let's get into the replays. Match 1 versus Methods. This is a pretty reasonable hand. I think I'm keeping it. So we're just going to play out Tower Star. Opponent leaves on Ash Barons, so that makes me think maybe it's Familiars. Not really sure what's going on. And then we're going to play out, we draw a map. And then I decide to, yeah, play out the Wellspring. So next turn I can, I'm trying to draw into my third land so then I can figure out what I want to map for. They cycle an Imposing Vantasaur and I think, okay, this is Cycle Storm. So opponent cycles some more. And then I'm going to go ahead and crack that, I'm trying to draw into a Tron land. We did draw into a Tron land. So we play out our map, and opponent's cycling a bunch. They ended up not doing anything and kind of fizzling. So then we get to 
play our uh, mine, and then we have Tron. So we're going to play Foundry into Mirror Retriever. And then basically at this point, if we draw all through Mirror Retriever, we have the combo. So we play Foundry and Mirror Retriever. So opponent is going to, I believe, attempt to go off. So they cast a bunch of Reavings and stuff. And here I got a pretty lucky in that they uh, are not going to hit it. Cycle, 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 cycle. They're going for it, they're going for it. They find another songs. 32 cards on the deck. They hit a reaping. So at this point they've used one songs, two songs, and two reapings. Cycling it with everything on the stack. Goes up to 10 cards in hand. Cycle, cycle. Drawing a ton of cards. So at this point I think that I'm probably dead. And we're not dead. And we draw into the altar. So what I do is sacrifice the mirror retriever, getting star, and I'm going to try to draw into my other uh, mirror retriever. And then if I have that, then that's the combo. So I play out chromatic star, um, and then I make a golem, and I sacrifice the golem for mana so that I can deadly dispute. Play chromatic sphere. Crack for green. I'm going to attempt to crop rotation. Um, one of the Tron lands to get a tower to have more mana. Trying to thin as well as draw. Grab a makeshift munitions. And then I'm going to play out Chromatic Sphere, still looking for a Mirror Retriever. Crack it for black, didn't get anything. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and play the Blood Fountain. I'll just play, I'm just going to play the maps, okay? Crack map. Get a cycle land. Cycle. Didn't draw it. So it's still at that point, if I had drawn the uh, Mirror Retriever, I could have made a Golem, sacrificed it, and then made infinite mana. So I decided to play the Blood Fountain here, and pass, I think. So now opponent's turn. Let's see if they can kill us. And they don't have anything. So now it's our turn again. And we find the Mirror Retriever. So, as I said, this is the point where we have infinite mana. So we just start sacrificing the Mirror Retriever and getting back Mirror Retriever, and the opponent uh, skips to that, which is very kind of them. Game two. We keep this hand because we have turn three drawn. Opponent goes land. We go land map. Cycle. And no plays, so we're just going to go land, crack, get our other land. So now they've got four creatures in the graveyard here. And we are going to play out a map and then just start slamming down eggs and cycling. Egg, wellspring, play mirror retriever. We're just going to play out the makeshift munitions at this point. Okay. Because now I'm looking at if I can draw into Altar plus uh, Mirror Retriever plus Munitions, we have the win. Draw a Deadly Dispute, play Chromatic Star, Crack for Black, and a Deadly Dispute, a Wellspring, and draw. Found the Mirror Retriever. So now we have, we can, are at a point where for every three mana we can do one damage with Mirror Retriever. So now we just need to find a the Altar. Although that still wouldn't win the game. We are playing out the star. Cracking for green. I'm going to um, crop something for mana. And then we're going to munitions to draw a card. Didn't draw into it. And then play the mirror retriever. I probably should have played the terrarium there. But I was just dealing them one damage to get back Wellspring, and I didn't think that one through. So then we played that terrarium on a pass. Now opponent um, uh, Dark Ritual into Mystical Teachings, and I decided to just uh, scoop it up there. It felt like they were pretty much going to win. Alright, I should note that this is game three, and if we look at the sideboard, I brought in the... Um, I got rid of all the Fangrim Marauders and brought in the two uh, spell bombs and two duresses.
Looks like I also cut the blood fountain. All right, let's go. So we actually open up Nile Spellbomb and we just lead on Nile Spellbomb. So opponent plays a land. We draw into Chromatic Sphere, which means we can go land into Duress or just Wellspring. I decide to Wellspring here because they don't have anything going on yet and I want to be able to hit that Songs. So they're going to turn to a Dranus Stinger. And then I'm, I'm looking at, okay, this is a pretty fast clock. I find a Swamp. Lead on Duress. And here, what I decided to do is take the Teachings because I can get rid of their Teachings. And then I can also get rid of the, the Cycle Creatures in the Graveyard at the same time. And then I play out a Sphere. And I decided at this point to crack to try to get crop rotation. And uh, this may have been a sketchy point, but I decided to crop Retron and pass. So opponent uh, does some cycling and plays another Stinger. So we're pretty much under the gun here. But we find Altar. So now if I can find um, a colored source, I need a lot of things to go right. I need a color source and I need the uh, Mirror Retriever and everything. And I decide to just go ahead and spell bomb them so that they lose their teachings and stuff because I know they have the um, songs in hand. And I didn't draw anything. So now I draw into a chromatic star. And what I end up doing is uh, we're going to deadly dispute the wellspring. And we draw into the combo. So now we just have it with barely any life and. Uh, in the very nick of time. And once we play it out, the opponent is kind and scoops again. So we can just here loop, make infinite golems, and then uh, shoot them with munitions. And that's the match. Here we are in round two versus MT Jeffering. And uh, we are on the draw. But we open a pretty decent hand, so I'm just going to keep it. Opponent leads on Colony Garden plant token, so this makes me uh, think they're either Bogles or the NBC with Dispute and Reckoner's Bargain and stuff, and I'm pretty sure it's that second one. So I'm just going to go ahead and lead on, I believe, land into map. Yep. Okay. So now they play Bajukabog. Now we're going to go land and just crack map, get our mine. And our opponent is going to play out a Wellspring. Just keep uh, kind of cycling around. And we are going to play Map and get the Tower. Now, on their turn, they lean on a Dispute. Okay. They play Blood Fountain. And our turn. So now we have 8 mana. And I think that the plan should be to Wellspring, Wellspring, Terrarion. So play Wellspring, we have the Munitions, play, play Terrarion, play Wellspring, play Terrarion, and I decide to hold Mirror Retriever because they have the Bajuka Bug and they could potentially bog my combo. And they go for an, an Angler. So now I am going to get the Makeshift Munitions online, and also the Finger Marauder. Crack the Marauder. I was thinking I could potentially crop and play another Marauder. And then end up drawing Deadly Dispute, so we're just going to deadly run a crop rotation. And they are going for uh, snuffing the Fangren Marauder, so I'm going to Deadly Dispute to gain some life. And we draw into our second Mirror Retriever here. So I'm going to get the Tower, and I'm going to go ahead and play out the Makeshift Munitions and the Mirror Retriever. So on their turn, they're going to smash in for five, and I'm just going to take it. I'm already. I'm just going to block. Okay, block and get the wellspring. That makes sense. So blocking and getting the wellspring gives me an extra card here, and they play Thorn of the Black Rose and Blood Fountain. Plays Rot Farm and picks up their Bajuka Bog. So now I know that this uh, Mirror Retriever loop is going to be pretty much offline. We're going to play out uh, the Fangren Marauder, start shooting things. And I decide to shoot uh, down the Thorn of the Black Rose, 
which maybe was not the correct play. Sorry, it's going a little fast. So now I have the I'm at the point where I can actually play Mirror Retriever and shoot them and get back Mirror Retriever. Decided to do nothing. Dead to the Kami. Target opponent exiles a creature they control. So I decide to just shoot them with my Marauder. So they bajukabog me completely. And now uh, I'm looking for Altar, and I'm looking for uh, Golem Foundry. You found the Golem Foundry. So now what I can do by having the Golem Foundry is for every three mana, I can Mirror Retriever and shoot them, and then I'm making Golems. So I crop rotation for more mana, and then I just start playing Mirror Retriever. We're going to sacrifice it, shooting the opponent, getting back Mirror Retriever. Well, the first Mirror Retriever is going to get back a Chromatic Star. We can play Mirror Retriever, get back Mirror Retriever. So we're just shooting, shooting. At first I thought maybe I had enough mana to shoot the Gurmag Angler, but I actually did not. So I'm going to continue shooting them out, and then I'm going to leave the Mirror Retriever on the board and uh, enough mana to make more uh, uh, uses of the Make Me Ship Munitions. No, I decided to not do that. Okay, fair enough. So the unexpected things are Angler, and now here things are starting to get interesting. Um, I realized that I probably, at that point, should have left the, the mana up to block and uh, sacrifice so that I would not have that had happen to me, but I didn't know that that was a thing that they were going to play. So opponent's going to smash in, and they go back up to 18, which is a problem for me. They play Vampire Sovereign, and then they're going to 21. So now I'm on this clock where I don't have my Fanger Marauders to gain life, and I really, really, really need to draw into the uh, way to get that. So let's go play. I'm going to start using the Mirror Retriever. Leaf. All right, slow it down a little bit. So I'm getting back Mirror Retriever. I'm going to attack. And uh, they did something smart here where they blocked with the plant token. That didn't occur to me that they could have done that. So now I'm going to play Mirror Retriever and kill their Vampire Sovereign, which again, maybe wasn't the correct play, but I'm trying to reduce their clock. And I know I can just block and sacrifice on this. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that, shooting them a bit. And now I realize that I can uh, block and shoot them, and I can actually just not use the mana yet. I just play make uh, Expedition Map here to get another counter on the Golem Foundry. So they're going to attack. I make a Golem. I block. I shoot them. And blast them. Or I just deadly dispute there. They play another uh, Vampire Sovereign and now they're at 21 life. Which is just absurd. So now we're at the point where we have the all for combo. So here I'm at 18, 19 minutes, and I know that all I need to do is make enough life or make enough golems to kill them in one go, and I should be able to win. But um, they have four mana. They can Blood Fountain back the Vampire Sovereign. So we have to make quite a bit. So let's go ahead and uh, press play, I guess. You can see this is a very convoluted loop and annoying. So play the Mirror Retriever. Sacrifice the Mirror Retriever for mana. We're just going to attack first. Okay. Just sacrifice the Mirror Retriever for mana. Play the Mirror Retriever. Do it over and over and over and over and over again. So now at some point, I'm trying to get to 30. And I'm going to use one of them to kill this Vampire Sovereign. So that I'm not taking damage. I decided that 30 was a good spot because then I'd have 10 golems and I could deal 30 damage. So we're looping, and as you can see, it's mana neutral. So one of the important things is, if you're playing this deck on online, is that you want to only be floating two mana exactly. Because when you click Mirror Retriever and try to cast it, you have to click the mana unless it's the exact amount, which causes you a ton of time loss, and I would not recommend doing. So we're hitting Mirror Retriever, getting it back, playing it, getting it back, playing it. I ended up shooting the... Um, Vampire Sovereign down, 
which uh, I thought was a good idea at the time. And now I realize that they can get it back and replay it. So we're just going to go get them, play it. I'm using as much mana as I can, and then they get back their Vampire Sovereigns. So they're going to attack, I'm going to block, I'm going to sacrifice, and shoot them. And then they're going to play their Vampires again. There goes a Wellspring, and Reckoner's Bargain, so they gain some life. Which I was kind of accounting for, but it's not like a huge amount. And they could have like sacrificed this Gurmag Angler to make the clock not very good. So now we are going to just jam a ton of uh, golems on the table. So we have 10 golems. They have two blockers. That means we're going to be doing 26 damage. No, 24 damage. So I think I probably just attack. Oh, I just killed a plant. That's it's easy to do. Slam in, and we kill him. Oh, they have Spinning Darkness. Oh. <laughs> so they had Spinning Darkness on one of my creatures, which would have gained them three life. But I ended up uh, just sacrificing it to shoot them, and they had taken, they took lethal damage and lost. Okay, post board here. So, sideboard. I took out one crop rotation. I don't even know what I brought in. Hmm. Let's check. Okay, the crop rotation was removed in favor of one nature's claim to eat a relic. All right. So we keep a hand that has a decent start. We're just kind of cantripping a little bit, and we draw into a deadly dispute, which is awesome. So I'm going to play Chromatic Star. Opponent does not find a land and leads on... Uh, the blood token discarding rod in reunion which has flashback and we're going to lead on playing Icar wellspring i believe and they just duress me and take my deadly dispute so now i'm going to i think what i did here is sacrifice the star for green and then i'm going to claim my wellspring to draw a card and then i was going to go ahead and play chromatic sphere i was going to cast mirror retriever all right, opponent plays another duress and takes a chromatic star or a sphere. And we're going to play mirror retriever and blood fountain. And we discard mine and draw a sphere. And then I think at this point they had no more, still had not found their second land and they scooped. Oh well. Okay, so this is round three. And I know that Oliver Hart is usually on blitz. They confirmed are on blitz and I don't think I can win in time but I'm just going to play out a couple of things. They play out a Kiln Fiend, I have nothing, and I just decide to scoop, I believe. Oh well. I think that post board is going to be much better, so I don't think they're keeping not a turn 3 kill, and I'm just going to move on. Now here's post board, and what I decided to do was go down to just one altar, one foundry for my combo. If I get into the combo win, I brought in my five blue blasts, and I got rid of blood fountain, munitions, munitions, and that is it. So here we are. We have all of our blasts, uh, some marauders, and barely any combo. But the plan is to just uh, blast them out in the early, early games. So we lead on Terrarion. I'm just hoping that I can cycle into a blue blast. I don't draw it. So I go ahead and play out, I believe, map and another Terrarion. And then opponent has the turn two kill and fiend. Now we are in quite a bind, but what I'm going to do is lay out the power plant. We could have Tron here. So I'm going to sacrifice the Terrarion for black green, or blue green, rather. Draw a card, draw a deadly dispute. So I'm going to crop rotation, grab tower, lay out the chromatic star. Sacrifice it for black. Trying to draw into a blue last. We're going to Deadly Dispute, sacrificing the Terrarion, and we finally draw the Hydroblast. And then I'm going to go ahead and play out Map, Star, and Blast that. 
and we get a little bit lucky. Or no, we don't. They have another festival crasher. So we're going to upkeep, crack an expedition map. I grab a cycle land. I draw a land. I cycle. I find Mirror Retriever. I play out. I'm going to see. Play out the Mirror Retriever. And then I just play out another Mirror Retriever after cracking the Chromatic Star. And the opponent does not have any way to kill me this turn, but they can deal me a ton of damage. They can deal me 17 damage and put me to 1. Playing Morphos, Morphos, Apostle's Blessing, Raise the Effigy, which has been a thing that people are bringing in, and they kill something. So I'm going to crack map again on upkeep. Grab tower. Star. Play star. Crack it. Bargain. So we're going to black. Bargain our mirror retriever. Getting back chromatic star. So that puts me to three life. Not dead to lava dart now. Although I would be dead to lava dart on a mirror retriever anyway. And I think... Probably should play out the Wellspring, which I do. Play out the Wellspring, play out the star, crack the star, don't draw anything, play Mirror Retriever, play map, crack map. So I'm still just hoping to draw into something, and I pass. And the opponent does not draw well, and they pass. So now we draw into Golem Foundry, and we still don't have anything going on, and we pass. Opponent has nothing and attack passes. So I believe at this point I decide it would be No. Soon. Yeah, there we go. So it's important probably to not die to Lava Dart here, so I um, cave up the mirror retriever. Still drawing nothing. And but luckily opponent is drawing lands too. So he's uh, getting things online. And now we have the Fangren Marauder. So I attack here because I'd want to draw into I wanted to draw into uh, Chromatic Star if they blocked, but they didn't. So now I'm going to bargain the Mirror Retriever, gain two more life, go to five. And play out the Chromatic Star. So now the, the choice here is whether or not to crack for green or crack for blue. I think I decide to crack for green. Yes, I think that's the better play because we can... Get our finger and marauder on the table and then hope to draw into some more artifacts we draw into deadly dispute this means next turn we're going to be gaining a bunch of life but we can't do anything right now and the opponent does not have anything online so they pass and now going to bargain or probably just deadly dispute first because we have to get colored sources we're going to deadly dispute in a wellspring we gain five life and go to ten now we got Ashnod's Altar in line, which means we have infinite life. So they scoop to that. Awesome. Game three. We have turn two Hydroblast, so we're keeping. Opponent leads on Crash through to Cycle, which means they might be looking for a creature. So we go land into Sphere. And they go turn two Crasher. And we go blast through Crasher. And I forgot to play out a Chromatic... Hmm, no. I decided to not play the Chromatic Sphere here because I was afraid of the Raise the Effigy. And if they raise the Effigy this, I won't get the draw from it. So I wanted to hold it for when I could Hydroblast. Opponent leads on a Reckless Impulse and finds Teamer Battle Rage and a land. So they play the land and leave the Teamer Battle Rage in the Exile Zone. We play land and Chromatic Sphere. And pass. Opponent goes crash through, land. I'm afraid that they're going to have creature plus hydro pyroblast. I draw mine. I cycle for green. Decide to crop rotation. Get power plant. Play out the swamp. Now I'm shields down. But if I draw into an artifact, I can dispute it. I'm just like gambling here. They didn't draw anything, so I get to start running the tables. 
We're going to play Icker Wellspring and dispute it. And we draw Terrarion, so we're going to leave Hydroblast up. We play Festival Crasher, and I decided not to Hydroblast it, being afraid of um, Pyroblast and also trying to get these Fangir Marauders on board and then gain life that way. So let's see what we do. We're going to crack for green blue, maybe? Okay, crack that for green. We're going to play the Fangir Marauder. Crack for blue green. This is all very risky here. I got a 25. Hydroblast. So this forces them to use the Power Blast on my turn or their protection spell. I feel that this game was played sloppily on my end. And then we're gonna. So that is not dead. And I can play out the Fangin Marauder. I just decide we're gonna cycle. Okay, so we can play the Terrarion, it got kind of lucky. Play the Terrarion, and we can bargain the Terrarion, go up to 30 life. Okay, we draw a Mirror Retriever. So that's very good. And we can actually get back our uh, Chromatic Sphere or something. Now, opponent is looking at our board, and they decide to pass. So we're going to play map and crack it for Cave of Temptation and pass. Or we should play Fanger Marauder and then pass. I considered attacking there and then I backed off because I was scared. They play a Kiln Fiend. Now it's getting worse. So we're going to play out another Fanger Marauder and the map and then crack it to gain 15 life. And I get a Haunted Fangraph, which can be used to get back a Mirror Tree or a Fanger Marauder. Opponent declines to attack. We got Reckoner's Bargain, which is great. So we can just uh, Reckoner's Bargain the Mirror Retriever to get back something and then play the Fangraph to get back the Mirror Retriever. I decide to attack just in case they block. Just for that one damage. We're going to bargain it. Getting back Sphere. We get back a sphere, we draw two cards, we play out the wellspring to draw some cards, play mirror retriever, play out sphere, play sphere, we're just going to crack for black right now, go to 83 life, play that sphere again, crack for blue, just hoping to draw into a hydroblast and they scoop to all of that life. So the plan worked there, temple them into a ton of life. Round four, reverses Sir Puffs a lot on uh, Suicide Black, but I didn't know it at the time. So we open our hand, we have Mine, Power Plant, uh, we also have two colored sources and Bargain, and I think it's very good, and we end up top decking Tron. We're just going to play out probably Terrarion here, or Chromatic Star. Uh, they're on Black, I wasn't sure what's going on. They play out a Dothy Slayer uh, off Dark Ritual, so they go Dark Ritual, Sign and Blood, Dothy Slayer. And we're going to lead on Wellspring. So an opponent is going to get in for two, as well as play Sign and Blood on themselves. Whoa. Sorry. So th what they did was they played Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Sign and Blood, Sign and Blood, Dothy Slayer. They're just going all out right now. We crack for black. We're going to Deadly Dispute the Wellspring. Trying to draw into a uh, finger marauder or something. And then we're going to play altar. Play mirror retriever. Crack the retriever. Get back wellspring. Okay. We can cast wellspring here, or we can cast terrarion plus chromatic star, which I think that's what we do. And pass. So we're at 18. Now they're going to. Kumbai Witches. Kumbaj? I don't know. Puts me to 14. I play a land, and then we're going to start casting stuff again. We're going to crop the mine for a tower for more mana. And too thin. 
display the wellspring, and we draw into the finger marauder, so now I feel pretty confident. Crack for black green so that I can cast the finger marauder and then immediately cast back Reckoner's Bargain. Cast the finger marauder, Reckoner's Bargain. Now we're at 19. And now we actually have infinite life loop. Mirror Retriever plus Astronaut's Altar. So we just keep doing this until the opponent scoops. Oh, they don't they decline to scoop. So we're at 56. And it does waste a bunch of time doing that, but I don't think I can die from 56, so I just pass. My opponent has four cards in hand. They play uh a creature, they play Paralyze, which I've never seen before, but it says tap Enchanted Creature, and then attributing your upkeep, you can pay four to untap it. I was like, whatever, I have a lot of life, it's fine. <laughs> so they get in for four. But they know that I'm not killing them, so it's no big deal. I, I decline to untap it. Play some artifacts. So now I'm just trying to cycle into something that can win the game. Deadly Dispute. Gain some life, draw some cards. So I have nine cards in hand. I cycle the polluted mire, I draw into Breckner's Bargain, and they just decide that that's enough, finally, and they quit. Okay, host board. I brought in the Marauder over the munitions, and I also cut a crop, which may have or may not have been a good idea for the two arms of Hadar. So we're opening, once again, a decent hand. I think this is a keep. Because we have uh, Tron coming up soon, we have Bargain the Terrarion, we have Golem Boundary. And I end up uh, top decking a Tron land. And they go turn two Slayer. And we're just going to grab another land. Grab the power plant. Now opponent is going to play Dothy Slayer. <laughs> Puts me to 18. So land, play map, crack map for tower. I guess I'll wait till their turn. Dark Ritual into <sighs> Vampire Sovereign, which drains me for three. No, I'm on quite a big clock because it's going to put me to 11 and then they're taking another 7 damage the next turn which puts me to 4 I crack for tower and they get in play tower play golem foundry doesn't really matter because um, I can't block the shadow creatures if it was fear I could block it play terrarion So here I want to Deadly Dispute the Terrarion, so I can have colored sources. Draw into Ashnod's Altar. Chromatic Sphere. Play Star. This thing. And let's see what they have. They get in for seven. I just decided to make an artifact creature token. And I was just wondering, maybe I could block, but no, it is confirmed. I cannot. And next up, they lean on a dark ritual again, which I was surprised about. And they are going to, again, play a vampire sovereign. So this puts me in exactly one. So now I'm at Fanger Marauder or Bust. All right, what are we going to do? I'm going to lead on Bargain. Bargain the Chromatic Star to draw three. So we draw into a Wellspring. Play a Wellspring. Okay, draw a swamp, not super helpful. We have the Ashnaut's Altar to convert the Golem token, but we wouldn't go positive on mana. So we're going to play the Wellspring. 
Bargain the Wellspring to draw three again. We find the Marauder. So now at this point it's just how do I cast it? We have one, two, three, four, five, six mana exactly. So we could, I think this is kind of a tricky play. So we're gonna crop rotation the swamp to get tower. This gives me eight mana. I'm gonna play out the astronaut's altar. And then I'm gonna sacrifice the golem token. Or I'm gonna play a chromatic star. Okay, so now two golem tokens available. I'm gonna cr crack it for green. And now I can sacrifice the golem token. That gives me six. Play another token. Play finger marauder. I'm gonna sacrifice the token to gain five. That puts me to nine. And then I can cast Mirror Retriever. Sacrifice the Mirror Retriever for mana to get back Chromatic Star. And then I can play the Chromatic Star and the map. And then I can make another token if I want. I do. And then I can crack the star. After sacrificing the token, I can crack the star to gain life. And then we can crack the map. And then uh, opponent uh, kind of salted off on me. <laughs> Box of luck. And I'll see you in the next match. Here we are in round five, playing for the trophy. Now we have tower, mine, sphere, a uh, way to draw cards. I think this is probably keepable. I'm just going to go lead on Sphere, and opponent leads on Swamp. And then we draw into a snow-covered Swamp, so I'm just going to play out the Mine and pass. Opponent leads on another Swamp. This person, Lay Cookie, has been playing MVC, so I kind of think that's what they're on. Pass. Now, when you're playing against this deck, a lot of times they lead on, they have a turn 3, um, Chittering Rats, so here I'm going to pass, I think. Okay, we're just going to play the Altar, or the Golem Foundry. Play the Golem Foundry. Okay, so they play Chittering Rats. I have to put a card back. I sacrifice the Sphere for green. I'm going to Crop Rotation. Power Plant. Play Altar. Start building up uh, some Golem Foundry tokens. Play Chromatic Sphere. Now they have turn four. Uh, just straight up, just slam the, the Monarch. And now I have um, no. I'm going to black, trying to look for um, color sources or artifacts and stuff, but I didn't find any. So now I think I'm just going to sacrifice the altar to draw some cards. And now we're going to play Mirror Retriever. And play a land and pass. They're going to bog me, which stinks. And then they're going to Edict. And I actually decide, I made a Golem token, but then I thought better of it and just sacrificed the Mirror Retriever. So now we don't have anything to do here, so just play a land and pass. And opponent's going to play a Gary and attack. I decided to not block. So I have a fa Haunted Fengriff. Doesn't do very much. Pass. They play a uh, Chainer's Edict, kill my creature. Now I have the Mirror Retriever. And I decided to get back the other Mirror Retriever. Play the Mirror Retriever, just for blocks, because I'm at a very low life total. They play Pestilence, and I can see the game. We're in game two here, sideboard. I decide to cut the makeshift munitions on the crop rotations, bringing in a Fangren Marauder and some Duresses. Uh, I think that's it. There's something else, and the Nature's Claim. So here we go. This is a pretty good hand because we can turn to Bargain the Star 
or play the star and then uh, bargain the mirror retriever. Opponent's just going to go swamp. And we draw a, wicker, a wellspring, so I'm just going to play the wellspring, I think. One of these on swamp again. So, in anticipation of a Chittering Rats, I play out the Expedition map and pass. So, opponent plays the Chittering Rats, and I'm just going to put back the mine, the mine, and then sacrifice for in my other Tron land. And that way I'm not drawing the dead with the mine, but we draw mine anyway. Our plant. Uh, bargain the Wellspring. Draw. Play out... Mirror Retriever, no. Sacrifice for black, and we draw a Golden Foundry. So play Golden Foundry, play Blood Fountain, play Mirror Retriever. Okay. Opponent plays Relic, which is unfortunate. We're not going to block the Chainer's Edict, and I'm going to go ahead and get back to Wellspring, but they use the Relic. So now we are going to cast. Mirror Retriever, and uh, start trying to just cycle things a little bit, and I'm trying to make a lot of creatures. I decided to hold the mine for cracking the expedition map in case they had another wrath, I guess. Oh, because I wanted the Mirror Retriever to get some value if they, uh, if they killed it. Not really sure. I'm not sure why I did that. Okay, coming along. Now we have Altar plus Mirror Retriever plus Golem Foundry. We can make almost infinite golems as long if we draw into another Mirror Retriever, we have infinite golems. So I'm playing Altar. They are going to kill the Mirror Retriever. I just get back map, I guess. That's the only thing I can get back. Going to attack. Play out some uh, expedition map, crack map, get tower, play tower. We're gonna cycle, trying to draw into the mirror retriever. Map, crack the map. We're just gonna uh, blood fountain back the mirror retriever. What's going on here? Making a lot of confusing decisions. Play out the chromatic sphere. And I think we're just going to pass. Okay, we pass. So they are going to play Thorn. So now they're the Monarch. And I'm going to go ahead and make Golem and attempt to take the Monarch. So we attack, and they don't do anything. So they just let me have the Monarch, which was really surprising to me. And I'm going to just try to cycle a little bit and uh, make some golems. And then I'm going to get back my mirror retriever. I'm going to crack. Just play mirror retriever. Okay. See if I can draw into the mirror retriever combo. Crack. Crack. Play expedition map. Or we're trying to thin the deck with the map. Mirror retriever gets back blood fountain. I can play the Blood Fountain. I end up finding a Deadly Dispute. Play the Blood Fountain. I decide to Blood Fountain back. No, I'm just going to Deadly Dispute. Okay. So now we have pretty much no change to... We can still Deadly Dispute here. I decided to Deadly Dispute. I find another mirror retriever, and then that's going to be pretty much the game. So I can just cast the mirror retrievers off of sacrificing the golems, and then I can make a ton of uh, creatures. And what that's the plan. But we are quickly losing steam on our clock, and we're going to try to get as many tokens as we can within a reasonable time frame so that we don't time out in the very end of this match. So we're going, 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 going. We're casting mirror retriever, and our clock is dwindling. Get back Retriever, play Retriever, get back Retriever, play Retriever. I like to get to 30 for some reason. That just seems like a good number to me. And then I was thinking in this position that I could um, Mirror Retriever 
for something else and then blood fountain the two mirror retrievers and then get back to mirror retrievers but it was also just, in my head is like very confusing so we're just trying to we're just trying to uh loop and loop and loop and loop okay so what are we doing here i got back the wellspring i sacrificed the uh creature now i'm getting black now i get back my two mirror retrievers okay so the point of that was uh, by putting all the mirror retrievers back in our hand with the blood fountain now we are protected from relic or bog and we have 10 golems ready to go we draw, and they do have Bajuka Bog. So, what happens? They do nothing. We're going to make a bunch of golems. I'm just making enough to be able to attack and uh, win through one removal spell. And that means they have to wipe the board. So they wipe the board. And then I can just loop the Mirror Retrievers again and have enough uh, to be able to kill them on the next turn again. I duress and we get rid of an edict. We have nothing in hand anymore. So we're just going to continue looping, drawing, play me retriever, play a wellspring, just trying to build a bunch of board and then we end up passing and discarding a land. They have a Jukabog again to get rid of a Mirror Trigger, but it doesn't really matter because we just have a bunch and we win the game. Okay, this is for the Marbles. Uh, game 3, match 5. We have turn 3 Tron and some Cantrips, so I'm keeping it. Opponent leads on Relic, so we're just going to go Tower and Expedition Map. And they have nothing. So we draw into Tron here, so we can play out the Wellspring. And they have a turn three Chittering Rats. I put back a land, and I don't want to redraw it, so on upkeep I'm going to crack the map. And I, here I'm going to get the um, Cave of Temptation. Play land. Play Terrarion plus Chromatic Sphere. Now opponent has... Pestilence. And we're going to try to get down a Fangren Marauder, I think. We're going to bargain here. There's a Fangren Marauder, and then we're going to bargain. Gain a bunch of life. Draw some cards. Now I'm going to crack and duress them. They have Grey Merchant and two Swamps. And they end up having Thorn of the Black Rose as their top deck, which is very, very good for them. We're going to go ahead and cycle. Don't draw anything. So play the land. I was concerned about potentially um, an Edict or something, but I decided to just pass and leave up Deadly Dispute the Marauder, which they have an Edict, and I'm going to Deadly Dispute the Marauder. Now we have Foundry. That could be a win condition through Pestilence plus Thorn in the back rows. They're just going to get in. We play the Foundry, play a Chromatic Star, or just go ahead and play the Marauder first. Okay, play Chromatic Star first. All right. So the reason to play the Chromatic Star first is if you play the Chromatic Star after you play the Fang and Marauder, they can kill it before this hits the board and you can't sacrifice it to gain life. So that's why I played it first. Now we're going to use this to get green. I'm going to crack it for black. We draw into Mirror Retriever. And we are going to play the Mirror Retriever. Alright. Pass. They decide to kill the Mirror Retriever. But we try to get something back and they crack the Relic. They play Sign of Blood on themselves. Chittering Rats, unfortunate, so I put back a land, and they play Witches and don't attack. I'm at 35 life. So at this point, I think that the best play is to dispute the treasure token to try to draw some cards. I find a Wellspring and a Chromatic Star. Play the Wellspring, play the Star. We're going to crack the Star for black. 
We find Alter. So if we have another Mirror Retriever, we have a full combo. So we bargained. Find a Wellspring. Cast a Wellspring. Find nothing. Play Mirror Retriever. Play Alter. So now we're protected from Edicts. We're going to sacrifice the Mirror Retriever to get back Wellspring. We're going to cast Wellspring. Fangered Marauder. So I could play out two of these and then sacrifice them to make to play the Marauder, but I think that's not the right play, so I pass. And I'm still protected from the Edicts with the Golem Foundry. Opponent plays Phyrexian Rager and then a Grey Merchant. So they're gaining a ton of life. And on my turn... I play out the Marauder. Get in. Gain 10 life. We are going to play the Terrarion. I'm considering playing the... So we do play the Haunted Vengraph. We're going to crack it to get back the only creature in our graveyard, which is the Mirror Retriever. We play out the Mirror Retriever. Sacrifice it for mana. Get a Chromatic Star. Play the Chromatic Star. We're going to just sacrifice a Chromatic Star for mana to cycle it. We have found a Duress. We Duress them again. They just have Great Merchant. So we can't do anything and we pass. On their turn, they slam Grey Merchant. They're kind of not able to use this Pestilence uh, because they don't want to kill all their creatures. They'd have to kill them both with my Fangry Marauders in play. So I play the Expedition map and crack it. And I don't have a Cycle Land, so we don't have anything to do. We just play Land and Pass. And they play a Witches and a Great Merchant. They're gaining a bunch of life. So now it's basically at this point where I don't think I'm going to be able to attack them and win the game. And you, you can see them at 5 minutes on clock. So what I really want to do here is draw into a Mirror Retriever, loop a bit to gain life, and then just start F6ing my turns. So they draw two extra cards. I draw one extra card a turn. Or they draw one card extra a turn per me. So I have 23 turns, and they have 17 turns to deck out. That's what I'm saying. So we end up drawing, casting things, sacrificing, doing nothing. We don't attack. I do not want to take the Monarch. Now opponent, uh, which is Cottages back, they're rats, so they rats me, and then I'm just going to draw a land. I play the land and pass. No attacks. They play Sign of Blood. They bajuka bog me, so now my mirror retrievers are turned off. They rats me. So I'm still just playing into the uh, deck them game. I play in land and pass. Okay. They play a relic. So now my um, mirror retriever loops are probably not going to be very good. I just play chromatic sphere uh, and pass. Pestilence. Okay. Now I have a power plant. I'm just going to play the power plant and pass. I crack the okay. Crack the terrarion. Play the blood fountain. I could um, potentially whoop. Could potentially play the blood fountain to get back a mirror tree or something. Oh, that's a way to play around relic. I didn't think about. So if I blow a mirror, draw. Oh, okay. So here the mistake. Uh, because I didn't have, I wasn't thinking clearly because the clock was almost gone. But I could actually play mirror retriever. Um, sacrifice it, play Mirror Retriever, sacrifice it, and just start gaining life. And then if they go for the Relic, we can actually Blood Fountain both of them back, and then we can loop and then kill them. So at this point in paper, you would be able to make infinite uh, golems, and then on your on the next turn, you would just make infinite golems, make force them to Pestilence, they wipe the board, and then you make infinite golems again and attack and win. But we actually cannot probably do that loop in the amount of time to win. So now we're in a scary position. Okay. They have five cards in hand. They go ahead and Grey Merchant again, up to 78. There's no way we'd have made enough golems to be able to attack them. We have the Nature's Claim. So I just go ahead and uh, claim the Relic. I'm just going to uh, play this turn. 
And then I'm going to start uh, Mirror Tree Relooping. And I just want to do enough to gain some life. And we're going to just Mirror Tree Reaver, but as you can see, the clock is going fast. We're gaining life. It's very hard to stack these triggers too, plus it's Banger Marauder, so I'm just like, ah, ah, it's happening. So let's just uh, fast forward this turn. We're just looping, drawing things, looping. I'm at 111. Now, I can't do quick math in my head to try to figure out how much I have to have for, th for them to not kill me, but uh, I don't know. I just kind of pass. And they have a Bajukabog in their hand, so I probably should have made more life. And now we're getting to the point where we just keep passing. They have 17 cards. I have uh, 14. They use a Pestilence. I just crack some stuff. No big deal. They play a Rager. And pass. So they're at 14 cards and 14 red parity. I probably shouldn't have played this. But I do anyway. And I'm going to uh, pass, I guess. Okay, so now it's pretty sketchy. 13 cards to 12 cards. Pass. We're in this, in this pass battle. I'm like at a position where I could time out or I could deck. Anything could happen. Expedition map. Okay, play altar. So now here, if we want, we can sacrifice these tokens uh, to gain some life. And we can also crack the expedition map and fail to find and crack this for life. So I'm feeling pretty good against these attacks. They'd have to wipe my board, as I said. So we're just going to pass. And I think they finally start just, uh, so now they have eight cards in hand. They play a relic. I decide to blood fountain and they crack the relic. So that forces them to draw an extra card. No blocks for me. I don't feel like uh, wasting my time clicking. <laughs> play the chromatic sphere and pass. Oh my gosh. It's bringing back memories. Heart's racing. <laughs> they, they play a uh, angler. I decide to block here. And I gain a bunch of life from that. I go up to almost 150 life. They're going to Pestilence a couple of times. I decide to make a bunch of creatures, just in case if they want to wipe the board, they have to kill all my creatures and gain me more life. Now, I play a Fangren Marauder and make a bunch of creatures, and then I, I'm at the point where I just want to keep f 6 Oh, man. So... They decide to uh, play some Pestilence triggers, and then I just sacrifice a bunch of Golems. I wanted to leave a couple in case they had some Edicts. They're at six cards in Library, seven cards in hand. They attack with the Angler, which I will not block. I'm almost 200 life. They uh, ping everybody for one. I draw Reckoner's Bargain, which would be too sketchy to draw. I realize at this point, they've played two Sign and Bloods. So if I go to... Less than four uh, cards in library, I will die. They'll be able to sign and blood me. My expectation is that they have two sign and bloods in hand. They play a pestilence. They get in. Ping me for one. Okay, so now we have expedition map. That's a bunch more life. They ping me. They had four cards in hand or in library. They play a thorn in the back. Black rose. Attack. I decided to not block. They play another Grey Merchant, go to 105 life. So neither of us are going to die to life. It's just going to come down to decking. Now they're going to two cards in library. They play a land. They play Debt to Kami on me. I exile a Golem. Play it again. I exile a golem. They have another one. So I think at this point that the best plan is to start gaining life. So I'm going to map. I'm at 1 minute and 30, 28 seconds. I'm just sacrificing things. I sacrifice my uh, treasure token. And then I sacrifice my expedition map. And then I fail to find. But we have two cards, but I can't draw them, otherwise I'll die to sign in blood, so I failed to find. Then I do it again. I 
exile a creature. They cast they play pestilence. Play Kambaji Wishes, and they're gonna attack with everything. This time I decide to not block because I thought maybe they could have a Witch's Cottage and put this on top, and I don't want them to be able to get any uh, more deck size, so I decide to not block. What they do is they defile their own creature. They actually cast Defile on their... Let's go back. On their Grey Merchant. Then they put the uh, Witch's Cottage so they can get the Grey Merchant back. Now I just play a land and pass. I decided to not play land, just in case they uh, chitter harass me. I'll have more cards in my library. Now they're at the zero cards in deck. Finally, they play Chittering Rats. And they decide to rats me, which I thought was strange, because they could have rats themselves. But then they would have died their next turn. I just don't know what they have in their hand. They have one Grey Merchant. I guess they just had the one uh, Sign and Blood left, which means that I could have gone to uh, three cards in the library and not died. They just attack with everything. I'm now blocking because I know that the last card is not going to save them. So, whatever. And they sign and blood me. And then they're at 0-0. Zero, zero, and... They deck to the Monarch. They just try to use the Pestilence triggers to, to try to time me, but I had F6 at that point, and they lost. Really, really crazy last game there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And uh, if you are interested in playing this deck, I would definitely play it in paper, but... Um, Playing on Magic Online is a stressful experience. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye.